It's pretty cramped if you want to go to space these days. Because with the retirement of the shuttle, your only option is the 1960s Soyuz. But don't worry, because in a few short years, everything is going to change. This is how we go to space in the 21st century. Meet the Dragon version 2. Announced in May 2014, it is one of three competitors for NASA's commercial crew contract, due to be awarded later this month. The Dragon is being developed by SpaceX, which is a company founded by Elon Musk of PayPal fame back in 2002. The company's stated goal is to reduce the cost of access to space in order to ultimately enable the large-scale colonisation of Mars, which is certainly an ambitious goal. But only 10 years after they were founded, in May 2012, they successfully launched into orbit and docked a Dragon version 1 with the International Space Station, becoming the first commercial company in history to accomplish the feat. This initiated a $1.6 billion contract with NASA to launch 12 resupply missions to the International Space Station. Three of these missions have already been completed successfully, with the fourth one currently scheduled for September 20th. Each Dragon version 1 can carry 3,300 kilograms of supplies to the space station, and crucially, it can return completed experiments back to the Earth. But SpaceX is only just getting started. Because the Dragon version 2 is designed to take people into space, not just cargo. It can carry up to seven people, rendezvous and dock fully autonomously, and land propulsively back on the launch pad with the accuracy and precision of a helicopter. It's this kind of retro rocket deceleration that will eventually prove vital to land multi-ton payloads on the surface of Mars. Indeed, it will likely be a future iteration of the Dragon capsule that will be used to make Mars One's first human landing on the Red Planet. The Dragon version 2 will be undergoing a pad abort test in November 2014, its first flight in 2015, its first crewed flight in 2016, and if everything goes well, then it should start ferrying astronauts to the space station from around 2017 or 2018. And the Dragon is certainly exciting, but it's just one aspect of SpaceX's ambitious plans. What makes them truly unique is their ongoing quest to develop a fully reusable rocket system. This is SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket, capable of launching 13.5 tonnes to low Earth orbit, or just under 5 tonnes to geostationary transfer orbit, it is already the cheapest rocket in the industry, at only $61 million per launch. Bear in mind that most of the cost of a rocket launch is due to discarding the many stages needed to actually reach orbit, with very little required for the actual cost of buying fuel. Realising this, SpaceX has set out on an ambitious project to try and re-land the first stage boosters back on the launch pad, so that they can be refueled and fly time and time again. And if they manage to achieve this, it could drop launch costs by a further factor of 10 to as low as between 5 and 7 million dollars, opening up space like never before. Beginning with a series of short, hovering test flights called the Grasshopper Program, SpaceX has been incrementally working towards achieving this goal. In September 2013, they reignited the engines on a first stage booster, but it spun out of control. Undeterred, they tried again in April 2014, and this time they controlled the spin and landed on the ocean, but unfortunately in the middle of a storm, so they weren't able to recover it. But in July 2014, they tried once more, slowing down from hypersonic velocity, reigniting the engine twice, deploying landing legs, and touching down on the ocean successfully with near zero velocity. Moving forward, SpaceX plans to make one more attempt at an ocean landing in this month's Dragon mission before attempting in October and December this year to reland the first stage on the solid surface of an ocean barge for the first time. And following on from this, they will then reland the first stage on the launch pad some point next year before attempting to refly it. But if we want to send missions to Mars though, we're going to need a substantially more powerful rocket. 
and for this SpaceX is working on the Falcon Heavy. Consisting of a Falcon 9 core and two additional Falcon 9 first stages attached, the Falcon Heavy will be capable of lifting 53 tonnes to low Earth orbit, which is over four times that of the regular Falcon 9. In fact, it is this rocket, or a similarly powerful launcher, that will be required to lift the components for Mars 1's Mars Transit Vehicle in 2024. And though the first demonstration flight is currently scheduled for 2015, SpaceX is already thinking about an even more powerful rocket, a so-called Super Heavy Launcher. And for this they're working on the so-called Raptor engines, each of which will put out six times more thrust than the Merlin engines currently used by the Falcon 9, and this Super Heavy Lifter will use nine of these Raptor engines. The Super Heavy Launcher would be used to lift what's been dubbed the MCT, the Mars Colonial Transporter, projected to be operational by the mid-2020s. This will be capable of lifting and transporting up to 100 people, and in addition to that, over 100 tonnes of material to Mars. Elon Musk predicts that the MCT would finally enable the large-scale colonisation of Mars within 12 to 15 years from now, and ultimately it would make possible the establishing of a self-sustaining city of 80,000 people on Mars. He even wants to get it to the point where anyone can pay 500,000 US dollars to move to Mars. So how about it? 30 years down the line from now, would you consider selling your home to move to Mars? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe for all the latest news and updates in this exciting and fast-moving field. And I'll see you next time.